Good morning, students. Welcome back to our today's video session of chapter number six, which we were discussing how do organisms obtain their food. Okay. So till now we people have discussed about the autotrophic mode of nutrition in the plants that how through the photosynthesis these organisms obtain their food materials. Okay. And then we have discussed about the heterotrophic mode of nutrition where we discussed about the parasitic plants. Okay. As these organisms that doesn't have the capability to synthesize the food materials on their own, they depend on other organisms for the sake of food. So that's why they are heterotrophic. Okay. And we call them as heterotrophs. Now in today's video session, we'll be discussing the continuation part of that one. So today now we'll be discussing about insectivorous plants. So, okay. What are insectivorous plants? Okay. In these plants, they also poses heterotrophic mode of nutrition okay heterotrophic mode of nutrition why i am saying heterotrophic because they also doesn't have the capability to synthesize the food materials on their own so they are also heterotrophs so these insectivorous plants as these plants are consuming insects okay to fulfill the requirement of nitrogen that means these plants are specifically growing in those regions where, is, where there is a deficient or deficiency of nitrogen. That means they doesn't have the proper supply of nitrogen through the soil. So therefore, to fulfill the requirement or the necessity of nitrogen, these plants are feeding on the insects. That's why they, we call them as insectivorous plants. Okay, so that means no doubt they have the capability that they can use the water and minerals. Okay, no, then they can synthesize the carbohydrates, but they cannot synthesize the proteins because of the unavailability of uh, nitrogen. So that's why to fulfill this requirement of nitrogen, okay, no, they have opted this modification of uh, consuming the insects. So we call them as insectivorous plants. Got it? So here the different examples we have for these insectivorous plants and one more thing these insectivorous plants are partially autotrophic and partially heterotrophic. That means they are synthesizing the carbohydrates by photosynthesis. So they are autotrophic but for depend for nitrogen they have to consume the organisms they have to depend on other organisms. So that's why here they are heterotrophic. We have picture plant okay we have this uh, fly trap sundew these are the different examples of insectivorous plants. So picture plant why we call it as a picture plant okay now. So here we are calling this as a picture plant because it have uh, the leaves are are modified into the pictures okay with a lid so when any insects it attract the insects by secreting some sticky fluid Kisi ka sticky fluid secrete karega par. so with that sticky fluid and sweet smelling compound the insects are attracted towards these okay now pictures so when the insects sits on this sticky fluid it gets trapped Okay, because that sticky fluid, okay, no, it holds the legs or the body of the organism. It cannot come out of that one. And slowly the picture gets uh, closed. It gets closed. Now this insect will be digested by the digestive enzymes which are secreted by this uh, picture plant. So it will secrete the digestive enzymes that will totally, okay, no, digest the body of the organism and it fulfill the requirement of the nitrogen through the body of these organisms or insects. That's why we call them as insectivorous plants. Okay, students, that is about insectivorous plants. The next is saprophytic plants. Okay, no, saprophytic what are saprophytic plants saprophytic plants are nothing but these plants depend on dead and decaying organic matter i'm saying they depend on dead and decaying organic matter so whatever be the dead bodies of the organisms or the waste materials of foods vegetables what we people are throwing here and there they all will be decayed or decomposed by these saprophytic organisms so these certain saprophytic plants like monotropa mushroom okay you know these are certain examples or bread mold rhizopus are the examples of saprophytic plants 
so they are obtaining their nutritional requirement through this okay no dead and decaying organic matter that's why they are known as saprophytic plants or saprotrophs so what they are doing they release enzymes on these dead and decaying organic matter okay no digestive enzymes that digestive enzymes decompose or degrade the organic matter or convert it into the liquid form from where it will be absorbed into the body of organism so in this way these saprophytic plants are obtaining the nutrition through this dead and decaying organic matter i am repeating they release digestive enzymes on the dead and decaying food and that digestive enzymes converted into the liquid form by digesting it later on it will be absorbed into the body of these organisms so that is about saprophytic plants and last is symbiotic plants symbiotic plants what is symbiotic association in the symbiosis or symbiotic plants two organisms okay no they are living together okay no but they are not harming any other mutually they are benefiting each other that means two organisms are living together without harming each other or without causing any damage to each other but uh, instead of that they are benefiting each other such association or such relationship is known as symbiotic relationship that's why they are known as symbionts so such plants are known as symbiotic plants like an example i can give okay no the fungi plus algae which we commonly call as lichens okay so these lichens are the combined combinations of fungi and algae so these algae they are taking the shelter in the okay no uh, structures of fungi i am saying what i mean to say that the fungal filaments there are filaments in the fungus root like structures so inside this the algal structures are taking the shelter so fungi will provide water and minerals to this algae and in return to that algae which has the capability of performing photosynthesis because of presence of chlorophyll it will synthesize the food material and that will be shared by both fungi and algae so here combinedly both are growing together so we call them as lichens similar example is rhizobium bacteria this rhizobium bacteria which lives in the root nodules of leguminous plants it lives in the roots of leguminous plants so those roots they will have some small small swellings here and there they are nothing but the places where rhizobium bacteria is living or surviving so this rhizobium bacteria taking the shelter in the roots of these plants and in return it provides nitrogen in the form of nitrate or ammonia ammonium to the plants okay now where they can synthesize the proteins so in this way this relationship is termed as symbiotic okay relationship and those plants are known as symbiotic plants okay students that's all in this video session and that's all in this chapter that is chapter number 6 with this we finish with our chapter and there is an information for you that this coming sunday on 18th of october sunday we will have a class test of 20 marks that will be an mcq based test online test for you of 20 marks syllabus is chapter number 4 reproduction in plants okay already i have sent you in the notifications okay as well as in the yesterday's uh, scholars erp our school app so now today i am sending this message through this video that we have we have the test on this sunday and our syllabus is chapter number 4 so prepare well for the exam students have a nice and wonderful day goodbye students